How's it going, folks? We're going to keep it somewhat uh, quick. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hope you're excited. We're going to be talking about uh, none other than the Santa Claus rally. It's worth mentioning because, uh, whoa, phone's going off. Um, we're seeing it right now. Look, look at the performance over the last week. It's been looking good, uh, and we're excited. So we're going to talk about that and then really get into my investment strategy. And why I don't necessarily care about it, but it's okay. We can care about whatever we want. So the Santa Claus rally here is referring to the tendency of the market to go over the last uh, two weeks of December uh, into the new year, typically the first two days of the new year. Um, strange to see why it happens. Obviously, theories uh, show that it may be increased holiday shopping, um, optimism, uh, as well as in two institutional investors settling their books before going on vacations, which happens early in the year. So there, there's positive possible reasons there but despite that look here's the thing more than two-thirds of December's dating back to the 1960s have resulted in positive gains for shareholders more than two-thirds that is very nice and I think it's worth looking at I mean you look at historical performance um, this is back from 1950 to 2020 there is no other month that has as many up years as December does 53 up years 18 down years, 53 out of the 71 years, up. Pretty nice, right? You look and, and none of them get there. Uh, November 48, 43 in October, September 32 only, um, which is crazy. You've seen more down years uh, in September than you've seen um, up, so that's pretty crazy. August 39, um, July 41, June 37, May 42, April you're getting close, 50. Uh, March 44, February 40, and 43 up years in January. So December, you're pretty well safe to say in December. Um, more often than not, you're going to be getting a positive year. It's very nice to see. It's very nice, honestly. Now, average return isn't quite there. Uh, as far as uh, average return, you've seen better return in November and April on average since 1950. But these are still great numbers, right? I mean, you're talking about consistency, and that's kind of what focus is. Now, um, you see the performance last month, the S&P 500 up 3.1, uh, RM1 Finance portfolio doing good, 3.43, and 2% up in the Robinhood portfolio uh, as well. Now, what are my main focuses here? Well, look, I know it's really cool to see that the stock you know your share prices go up you love to see it but I'm not one that necessarily is too focused on that I'm really focused on and if you know my strategy it's gonna be on producing income and how do I do that well um, overall I've been really working on purchasing um, income producing assets you see over the last month even when there was a little bit of turbulence in this month I purchased more income producing assets more southerly hotels which I believe I've developed into a a decent sized position over five hundred dollars already off the initial buy another fifty here I feel like over the long term this thing will reinstate the dividend next year I feel good about it um, but uh, other than that realty income ARI OHI ABR QILD we've been purchasing income producing assets quite heavily here in the last month we've seen the same and if you, if you look at the uh, M1 finance portfolio as well if you look at our buys, uh, let's show just the uh, trades here, the 27th, guess what? All nice dividend companies. Um, the 20th, mm, that's right, we put extra in, 150 bucks extra. And guess what? Income producing assets. Um, December 17th, income producing assets. I've really been focused on this. Um, December 14th, that's right, uh, income producing assets, VYM added to the portfolio. Uh, December 13th, um, income producing assets. I don't know if you get the picture here, but it's a big focus here. I'm working on bolstering the dividend yield and really trying to grow these portfolios in terms of the income they can generate. And why is that? Well, if you look over the long term, um, here's the future value projected on the Robinhood portfolio given uh, where we're at right now in terms of um, annual contributions uh, you get the five-year the dividend growth rate listed here showing a seven percent price appreciation and a maximum dividend yield of ten percent um, 
which could be higher, obviously. But I calculate this, and over the um, if you look over the next 25 years, this portfolio should be potentially um, valued at $742,000. $993. That's if we're averaging 7% return a year, as well as the dividend we're able to get, which is um, very nice because our yield currently is um, at, well, it, our yield is not responding, believe it or not. Um, but our yield's sitting at 3.2%, and that's actually gone up. If you recall when we uh, first showed this portfolio off to you, the yield was right around 2.9%. Now sitting at 3.2%. And our annual income at that time in 25 years should be $13,800. Very nice to see. Obviously, it could be a lot higher depending on what the actual growth rate looks like of some of these companies. Um, but that's very nice. Um, I don't know. I, I love it a lot. And that just depends on what exactly assets we put into it. Um, if we're buying higher dividend yield companies, that number will be nice, uh, nicer. But eventually, again, the goal here is to be retired by the time I'm age 50, and I think we're more than likely able to make that happen. This is just our Robinhood portfolio. We've got three other portfolios, um, and I think that there's a, a decent chance here that, that we could accomplish this. Um, and when finance is going to be more of a, a little bit of a different story, too, because it's actually when we've been increasing um, the contributions by a little bit heavier. Then you take into account the retirement accounts. I think we're feeling good about this number. And eventually we could retire and uh, be getting still, um, by my estimations, right around 50000 a year by the time I'm age 50. Pretty excited about that. And again, obviously just another thing to talk about without the dividends. If you just exclude the dividends, um, 25 years of growth, 7% um, rate of return. This is no dividends at all. $522,000 in the portfolio. Um, and let's say we wait till we're 60, uh, which is uh, 35 years. Look, it's hard for me sometimes. Uh, maximum is 30, never mind. We're waiting till we're 55, 700. And again, that's the thing. It just continues to kind of blossom from there. And you can see by year what it looks like. That's excluding dividends completely. So again, look, this is the goal here. Um, Social Security is going to be bankrupt, folks. If you're younger, you're not going to be able to enjoy Social Security when you're older. You need to get invested in the market for this reason. Santa Claus rally, there you go.